Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Today, the METS model 9877 VCR. This is a rebadged Panasonic NVHS 1000, and the number 1000 already suggests that this is kind of a special unit, and it sure is. You can't see it right now, but if I flip down this door, as you can see, we got ourselves a high-end VCR. Super VHS, Hi-Fi stereo, it's all there. All the speeds, built-in editing computer with remote control for other VCRs, jog and shuttle wheel, playback controls. Uh, we have, uh, of course, a time-based corrector and uh, various different inputs, manual level controls for the audio. It's all there on this wonderful machine. I've been using this throughout the past weeks for digitizing VHS cassettes and it did a really really good job at that so I thought it was time to give this thing a bit of an overhaul and make sure that everything is fine on the inside so let me go ahead and take off the cover so that we can see what's going on. And here we have the inside of the VCR and we will have to be brief at the electronic side of things because this right here is kind of unfortunate. It doesn't really open up. Um, it's uh, a huge great big circuit board with a ton of little daughter boards mounted to it as you can see. And basically you can lift out the whole entire circuit board, including the daughter units, the daughter circuit boards on there. Uh, but it's not like you can flip it up and, and just take a look inside. It's too full for that. However, I am very, very, very happy to be able to report there are no surface mount capacitors inside of this one. So it's probably going to keep on working for quite some more time. The mechanism, as you can clearly see, is the exact same one that we've already seen in the HS900 and the HS950, and therefore it's basically going to be the exact same process, except, that's another thing that I'm quite pleased with, I most likely won't have to lift out this mechanism out of this unit because uh, the bottom, the bottom panel, is actually going to unmount and that is going to allow me to uh, to access the uh, mechanism's underside. There is no circuit board in between. That's probably because I stuffed it all into this area. The power supply behind here definitely has to be the nicest one of the bunch because it's all shielded. I mean, look at that. It's, it's just a, a brick of metal. So that's quite nice. I mean, you have to shield it real well if you put it right next to the uh, to the video head amplifier. But um, yeah, so uh, well, first of all, we can uh, go ahead and uh, remove this uh, cleaning wheel. This, uh, well, once again, look at that. That thing is filthy. That's not going to clean up any more heads. It's only going to make them dirty. Oh, look at that. It's not accessible from the bottom, but, well, anyway, it is accessible enough. Like, I can reach these tracks and uh, I can in inspect the uh, the mechanism over here. That has got plenty of oil, so I don't have to worry about it. Everything over here should be fine. I don't think there was anything... Uh... Nah, there wasn't anything critical over here, at least not on the uh, two other mechanisms. We got the circuit board all around here, so it's probably going to be a little more complicated to get this thing out. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to 
uh, get some grease on these tracks and that should be it for the underside. There is also this box right here and I have opened it up to check for uh, sol uh, sol uh, surface mount capacitors. There aren't any, at least not on this side of the board and I can't really imagine that they would have hidden all the surface mount capacitors on the other side of the board. Uh, so I guess I'm just gonna leave this as it is. Close up this box again and uh, don't touch it anymore. So, uh, there it is. And we have the new grease in place, but I gotta say, all of the other grease, like that stuff right there, that all looks to be in much better condition than the other stuff on the other machines. So, well, maybe this has had some work done to it at some point. I don't know. Anyway, time to put the bottom cover back on. Now we now have the top side of the mechanism done. Got new grease, got new oil, uh, got some grease into uh, that gear right there because as you can probably tell originally that didn't have any grease in it at all pretty much. Got some uh, oil into all the pivot points over here. It is of course important that uh, after applying the oil that you go through with a dry cotton swab and you just uh, take up all the excess oil that uh, that is just forming a puddle on those parts because of course if you uh, if you take the VCR and move it somewhere you don't want those puddles to start flowing into places where you really don't want to have any oil at all. Uh, same goes for this. Uh, I will check and uh, if I should have a, a huge blob of grease forming somewhere because it's being pushed away by the guides I'll be uh, taking that away as well. Anyway the next step is going to be cleaning the uh, tape path and this time I'm gonna make an exception and I'm gonna get close with a cotton swab to the head drum. So we will obviously, oops, we will obviously have to uh, clean off that uh, black spot on the drum right there and our paper method is not going to do that because of course the black spot is not on the turning part of the drum. Since up until now we haven't seen all too much I'll now be showing the complete procedure of cleaning the mechanism so I uh, get my cotton swab nice and wet soak and wet with the cleaner we go ahead and uh, we're just gonna work our way through. We got this guide here first. That's already worthwhile because there is some dirt on that one, I tell ya. Okay. And on we move to the next one. These guides probably all have certain names, but of course I don't know them. Then we have this one. This is a little tricky because it does spin. So we can spin that and uh, clean it that way. Okay, that was good. Now we got that little one over here. I'm not sure if you can even see that. Okay, and the cotton swab is about to go fut. Well, now it has, so we'll move over to the next side. Clean off this thing right here. This is a guide that does turn next to the erase head and for some reason after my cleaning procedure it has gotten quite noisy when doing uh, rewind on the other machines. I'm not sure what's up with that. Okay, here comes the erase head. Ooh, well these cotton swaps aren't any good. I tell you, they keep falling apart. Okay, so here we go with the next one. Do the erase head. Get that nice and clean. That's that. Okay, now, do we have any dirty spots on the drum over here? No, we don't. So stay away from the head drum. Just this uh, spot over here. Ooh. That might, actually, that might actually be some grease that got on there. 
That's not the typical kind of dirt on the tape. That is solid black. Well, now it's clean again. Make sure we don't get close to any of the heads in doing the cleaning. If you, uh, if you do risk to come close to a head, you can turn the drum, turn the head away out of uh, the danger zone, so to say. And another cotton swab. That's going to be for these over here. Okay. There's another one that turns over here, so we can clean it like that. One problem while doing the cleaning is you cannot get the capstan to turn. And uh, this machine actually... Ooh, that... Ooh, shit. That guide is one hell of a fragile little thing. It wasn't like that on the other units. That's interesting. Okay, well, it should, should be all fine. That is in place. Another guy down here that we can do. And then we have the uh, sync and linear audio heads. Clean up those. They're always uh, sandwiched together in this kind of a package. Okay, that looks good. There is another guide next to that that we can do. I'll take another cotton swab, get that nice and wet. Now I'll clean the uh, capstan, which is uh, now that's a problem. It's got this uh, this uh, shell around it, so you can only reach the front half of it. And there is no way to turn that. Oh my! This has got some dirt stuck on it. Oh dear. Might not even be able to clean that off. Nope. I don't want to damage it, so we will have to live with it. Okay. But the lower half we can clean. And that's that. Better than what it was like before. Now, the uh, pinch roller, as you can see on this one, it's quite shiny. So I am going to clean it off with my lighter fluid, which uh, I usually only use for the heads. For the, uh, for the rollers, I like to use window cleaner. Because that contains alcohol, which generally is better for rubber products. But when they are shiny like this, uh, a little bit of uh, lighter fluid is uh, going to take away some of the material. That's going to... That should, hopefully, make them uh, grip again a bit better. Okay. And uh, also, uh, I had a bit of an accident happening. I got some uh, grease onto the pinch roller, so we have to use something that will remove grease. And that's what this does. Okay, oh, seems like uh, getting a lot of... Uh, these cotton swaps are junk. Getting a lot of uh, hairs stuck to this pinch roller. Okay, that ought to be fine. Okay, that's better. That's better. From this point on, for that thing, uh, the rule never touch a running system applies. It's not as shiny as it was before, and that's good. That is good. Okay. 
Now, moving on, we need some writing paper, which of course... Oh dear, some video editing is going to be required. I don't have any over here at the moment. Right, I now got myself some uh, normal standard writing paper. We're going to get that all nice and wet with uh, cleaner. And, uh, well, you have seen me doing this procedure before. Once again, we turn our head drum, put on a little bit of pressure onto the paper, do not move it, just hold it still and move the head drum instead. With the right kind of pressure applied, you will be able to actually feel the heads as they go across the paper on the other side while you're turning the drum. We will be repeating this procedure several times. We'll uh, change the directions of uh, spinning the drum at the next go. Okay, release the pressure and ooh dear, that was worthwhile. I tell you, that was good. So, we go straight ahead and take our next uh, piece of paper. So yeah, as you can see, that uh, that cleaning thingy that uh, was in the mechanism that we've already taken out, that didn't really do it much good. Would have would have looked nice on the uh, on the feature list from Panasonic, but uh, not good. Okay, next piece of paper. I'm actually going to push it on using two fingers this time. Let's see how that goes. Might be twice as effective, who knows. Anyway, spinning the drum in the reverse direction now. Ugh. I think I still got some uh, oil on my fingers. That's not good. Well, we are touching, we are not touching anything that uh, the oil would affect in a negative way. And now, let's see what we got. Well, I'd say the drum might actually be clean already. You can see there's not a lot of dirt on it this time, if we compare it to the last time. So I'm going to take one, one more paper I'm going to do it once again, and then I'll be back. Okay, another piece of paper didn't take off any more dirt, so we're done with that. I'm now going to go with the Q-tip soaked into uh, lighter fluid to remove the grease that I, the oil that I had on my fingers from the drum. I mean, up there it's not going to harm... Ooh, that's quite dirty up there. It's not going to harm anything up there, but, uh, you know, just for good measure, we're just going to take out that stuff. We don't need it in here. Okay. Ooh, that's quite dirty. Anyway, we're now done. So I can go ahead and uh, put the top cover back on and uh, we can give it a test. Or Well, we should probably test it before putting the cover on. But uh, either way, we're going to be doing that right now.